Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to determine the sum of arithmetic series using Gauss's method. Before we jump into this example that we have right here, let's have a short life story of Gauss and what prompted him to develop a method of determining the sum of arithmetic series. Gauss was born as Johann Karl Friedrich Gauss, a German mathematician and physicist. Legend has it that long time ago, when famous mathematician Carl Gauss was a young student, his teacher tried to keep his class busy by giving them a task of computing the sum of the first 100 integer. That means they were asked to get the sum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 97 plus 98 plus 99 plus 100. So pretty much adding all the numbers and that really keeps them busy. He stunned his teacher and his classmates by calculating the sum quickly without assistance. Now, how did Gauss do it? Now, let's go back to the video and see how Gauss developed a method in adding sum of arithmetic series. Okay, so we are supposed to use Gauss's method to calculate the sum of this given arithmetic series. That is, we're adding the first um, 15 numbers. That means that's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way to plus 50. So what is the sum for all of these first 50 um, numbers? There are steps that we need to follow in order that we can determine the sum of an arithmetic series using Gauss's method. The first step is to write out the given series. So this is the given series that we have right here. So we can go ahead and um, write, rewrite it. So we can have this as our S. S stands for the sum. And so I am going to rewrite all of this. Okay, so that's the first step. The second step is to add the series to itself, but reverse the order of the terms. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start with 50 and then all the way to 1. So I'm just going to go ahead and label that as, again as S. So we're now on step 2. So we start with 50 because we're reversing it. So I'm going to have 50 plus 49. So I'll do it backwards. Plus 48 plus 47 plus 46 plus and then all the way to 5 all the way to 1. I'm just going to go ahead and write it up here. Now we're ready to move on to the third step. The third step is to add these two equations that we have here. So we're going to add these two. So I put a plus there so that we can go ahead and say that if we are going to add this, this will be S plus S will be 2S. And that is equal to 1 plus 50 is 51. And then 2 plus 49 is 51. And then 3 plus 48 is 51. And then 4 plus 47 is 51. And then 5 plus 46 is 51 plus. And then we have 46 plus 5 is 51. Plus 47 plus 4 is 51. 48 plus 3 is 51, 49 plus 2 is 51, 50 plus 1 is 51. Notice that this right side of the equation that we have here would all be 51. And part of this step is to solve for the sum S. So please notice that these are all 51 so that we can go ahead and say that this is 2s is equal to 51. Now, how many 51s are there? That's the number that we multiply in here. Now, in order that we can determine the number that we put in here, we are going to go back to the lesson on slope intercept form. So I'm just going to go ahead and show the um, work on the side right here. So we are going to create a table. So in this table, we are going to um, name this as so I'm just going to go ahead and write the table right here. So we will have this as our N, and this will be our T of N. So our N here represents the term number. So I'm just going to label that up here. While our T of N is the term. Okay, so then we create the table. 
Okay, so we're going to start with a term number. We're going to start with 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So that's the term number. This means that is the first term. So, so in the given series that we have here, this is our first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term. So our first term is 1, our second term is 2, our third term is 3, our fourth term is 4, and our fifth term is 5. Notice that this term right here is growing by a fixed number that is adding 1 each time. So that's a plus 1 and plus 1 and then also plus 1. So if the growth factor is the same, we can go ahead and say that this table represents a linear function. We can go ahead and use the uh, slope-intercept form of a line, which is y equals mx plus b. So that we go ahead and say that our m for this um, uh, table that we have here, again, m represents the slope. It's the growth factor. That's 1. And our b or the y-intercept, or this is otherwise called as the zero term, that means we go back one time from the... Uh, first term, we go backwards one time to get the zeroth term. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a broken line right there. So the zeroth term means we subtract 1. So this is 0. So our zeroth term right here is actually 0. And that is our y-intercept b, which is 0. So that we can go ahead and change this um, equation that we have right here. Um, using this notations that we used there. So our y was actually t of n, so which is the term t of n is equal to our slope here is 1 and our x is the term number n and our b is 0, so that's a plus 0. So we can go ahead and say that our t of n is actually equal to n. So that is the equation that would work for this. So if we want to know the term number for 50, because we don't know uh, what term number is this, we know that this is first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term. What term number is 50? We are going to solve for n. So if our term is 50, we're going to solve for the uh, term of the last one. So that's 50 is equal to n. And so we can go ahead and say that our n is actually 50. We can go ahead and say that the total number of terms for this is 50. And this is the one that we put into the parentheses. This means that there are 50 51s in this series. So I'm just going to go ahead and write 50 right here. So if we multiply 51 times 50, so that would equal to 2,550. Now we are again supposed to solve for S, which is the sum. So we're going to divide both sides by 2. I divide this by 2 so that I am left with um, the sum S. We can go ahead and say that the value for S is 1,275 if we divide those two. This means that this is the sum of the first 50 Integers. That means we're adding 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to 50. The sum for all these would be 1,275. Okay, at this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, unpause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. Again, the first step is to write out the given series. So I'm just going to go ahead and label this as S. And then we are going to rewrite this. Okay, now we move on to the second step. The second step states that we're supposed to add the series to itself, but reverse the order of the terms. So I'm just going to go ahead and label this as S, and that is equal to, we start with 129, so that's 129 plus uh, 122, plus we have 115, plus we have 108, plus and until we get all the way to 3. 
Okay, now we're ready to move on to the third step. The third step is to add the two equations and solve for the sum S. So that means we are going to add these two equations that we have here. That's the first one and this is the second one. So we're going to add them up together. So this is how it's going to look like. Okay, so what I did was I added these two equations and it came out to be 2s and that they're all equal to 132. So that we can go ahead and rewrite this as 2s is actually equal to 132 times our problem right now is to determine how many 132 are there. So just by looking at this, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But please remember there are still these three dots that we have here is telling us that there are still more um, 132 in between these two right here. So how do we determine the um, the rest of this 132 that's in between these two here? So that we go ahead and use the um, slope intercept form. So I go ahead and show the work on the side here. Okay, so I've labeled the term number for n. This means this is the first term. So we look at the list. Our first term is 3. So I'm going to write 3 down here. That is the term. And then for the second term, that is 10. So I'm going to write 10 right here. And then the third term is 17. So I'm going to write 17 right here. And the fourth term is 24, so I'm going to write 24 right here. Now, looking at this, we can determine how much does it grow by. So that would be from 3 to 10, it was added 7 each time. So 10 to 17, that's plus 7. So um, 17 to 24, that's another plus 7. So then again, this is a linear function. Again, we are going to use the... Uh, slope intercept form y equals mx plus b where in this equation here our m or our slope is the growth factor which is 7 and our b is the zeroth term that means we go backwards one time so from 1 we go backwards right there so that value would be from we that would be 0 right here so we go back one time and then we go back one time on here as well so then um 3 minus 7 would be negative 4. So this is negative 4 right here. So this is where our um, y-intercept or the zeroth term is going to come from. So this is negative 4 right here because that's the value of the tn. Now we can go ahead and rewrite this in terms of this notation that we got right there. So our y is actually the t of n. So I'm going to write t of n is equal to our slope is 7. Our x is n and our y intercept is negative 4. So this is our equation or this is the equation that works for this given series that we have right there. Now our t of n, our term is 129. So that's the last term. So we say that this is term number 1, term number 2, term number 3, term number 4. That's n is equal to 4. Now what n is this? So how many terms total are there? So we need to solve for n. So again, our t of n is 129. That's the last one. So I plug it in here. So 129 is equal to 7n minus 4. Again, we're solving for n. That's the number of terms total for this given arithmetic series. So then we can go ahead and solve for n here. Okay, our n value is 19. This means that there are 19 numbers all together and you can get all the way to 129. So pretty much there are still numbers in here so that when we count them, this is n is equal to 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 
17, 18, and 19. So that's the 19th term. So this 19 that we have here will be multiplied to 132. So that is multiplied by 19. This means that there are 19, 132 on the right side of the equation. So there are 19 of them. Although it shows that there are only eight here. So there's still more in between that. And that's how we got it here. So that we can go ahead and... Um, Solve for S, so that would be 2S is equal to 132 times um, 19 is 2,508. So that's 2,508. And then again, we want to solve for S or the sum. We're going to divide 2 from both sides, divide this by 2. So we are left with S is equal to 1,000. 254. So this is the sum of this given arithmetic series that we have here. It means that when we add 3 plus 10 plus 17 plus 24 all the way to 129, which is the 19th term, it will give us 1,254. Did you get the same answers as this? Yeah. Good. Perfect. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya.